Uh, it's a wonderful psalm, isn't it? Well, I thought it was a wonderful psalm. Um, I, I quite enjoyed reading it this week. It's a wonderful psalm, isn't it? Yeah, yeah there we go. Um, just checking, you're still with me. Uh, praise the Lord, O my soul. So many of the Psalms begin, praise the Lord. And this one, it's bookended. Uh, on the one end, praise the Lord. And on the other end, praise the Lord. So in case you forget what's happening in the middle, it begins, praise the Lord, and it ends, praise the Lord. A bit like when you come to church and it begins with uh, songs of praise and finishes with songs of praise. The first reminds us why we're here. We're here to worship and to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And whatever happens in the middle, we make sure that before we go, we remind ourselves again that we have been here to worship. Hallelujah. Um, feel free to say hallelujah anytime you like. It's not Lent, and the, the, the Lent hallelujah police are not here this morning. So you are free to say hallelujah at any point in church. Praise the Lord. There you go. I've started it now, haven't I? And, um, but really, when we, when we talk about uh, what we're here for as a church, we say there are five things. Um, this, this is, um, uh, we've been saying these words for a while, worship, serve, life group, give, and go. And we've been saying that as a, um, as a, a, a sort of a shortcut formula, as it were, um, to understand what it is that the, the church is to do. Um, and to try and put it in a way that we can kind of get our heads around. And the first one is that we are here to worship. And so this week and next week, we're, we're in the Psalms, and we're just focusing on worship. And what does it mean to, as it says on the screen, bless the Lord? To bless the Lord, to praise the Lord, to ascribe worth to the Lord. Um, as an um, amateur singer, an amateur guitarist, um, I enjoy praising the Lord, and I enjoy worshipping. It's one of the things that I can do. I'm not very good at sitting down and praying uh, for ages. Some people have that gift. If you do, you know who you are. You can just sit down and start praying, and, uh, and you can just pray for hours on end, um, and that's wonderful. I don't have that gift. Um, but if I have a guitar in my hand and I start singing worship songs um, on my own, then um, I can go on for ages. Um, and I think it's because with the music, it helps me to not get distracted. Whereas if, if I turn to pray, um, just help me out. Anyone else have this trouble? You start praying, and then you start thinking, oh, did I lock the front door? Have, have I... Should I put the oven on for dinner now? Did I turn the kettle off? You know. But when I pick up a guitar, I just get lost, um, and uh, I can lose a, a huge amount of time. Um, but, but actually, the first and most important thing we're to do as Christians, and the first and most important thing we're to do as a church, is to worship. As in this last couple of years, we've, been, uh, we've had the, the carpet ripped up from under us. Quite literally, we've changed our carpet. But, but actually, because of COVID, we were not able to come and meet in person and worship. And we had to think about what does it mean to worship at home? Um, and, and actually, I think if you're sitting, and for those of you watching this at home now, if you're sitting at home and you've chosen to switch off some multi-million dollar movie on Netflix with a huge budget, and instead you're watching church from St. George's in Maple Ridge. I think that in itself is an act of worship. It's an act of saying, I'm going to stop. Netflix can wait. Let's pause Netflix and let's spend some time. And I think that, uh, I hope, that as we uh, move into a post-pandemic new reality, uh, that um, in those times when we can't be at church, because the car's broken down or it's snowing or, or whatever it is uh, that gets in the way, that that won't get in the way of us worshipping. Because worship is, uh, is to be at the core of our being as God's people. So as we see in the psalm, praise the Lord my soul, Lord you are my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. Anyone reminded of a song there? Anyone? The Spend of the King. Should we sing it afterwards? Let's do that. Um, we, we plan to do that. Don't worry. <laughs> That's in the plan. But uh, we sing the Spend of the King, and we, we, 
we're singing words of the Psalms. And as you read through the Psalms, there are so many of these words that find their way into, into hymns of old and worship songs of new. I said last week at the nine o'clock service when I preached on Thanksgiving uh, from Matthew 6, um, and do not worry. If you haven't seen the talk, it's on YouTube page uh, and the website. Um, but the way not to worry, because we all worry, is to seek first the kingdom of God. It's Matthew 6, 33, I think. Uh, it might be 34. Uh, will you forgive me if I've got it wrong by a verse? Uh, it's something like that. Seek first the kingdom of God. And this psalm reminds us again, first we're to praise the Lord. We're to praise the Lord who, as we see in this psalm, uh, we see this um, uh, a mimicking of Genesis 1. Uh, anyone remember what happens in Genesis 1? Creation. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and, uh, and how many days does Genesis 1 say it took to create the world? Six. Very good. Some people think it's seven. Nowhere does it say seven. It was six days, and then God rested on the seventh day. Um, and uh, I don't want to get into a creation or evolution debate um, at this juncture, um, because some of you have other things to do for the rest of the day, and we'd be here all day. But suffice to say that um, uh, even the evolutionary science and the pattern at which it goes is in exactly the same order as the creation narrative. And I just think that's wonderful. Uh, so to me, I'm not really that bothered whether God made the world in six days or however many millions or thousands or whatever of years. The point is that God made it. And so uh, you, you probably have heard of the Incas um, in, in South America. Um, and, uh, and in the Inca Empire, they worshipped the sun. Um, there is a realization in the sun that we are people uh, who do not worship the sun but we worship the one who set the sun, moon, and stars into place. That is the one who we worship. And the psalm is, is just wonderful. It, it, it takes us through in more or less the same order of, as the creation narrative in Genesis 1, uh, except it sort of starts off and then it, it, it gets it a bit wrong here and there when it starts talking about things in the wrong order. But it always comes back to the right order. Um, God created everything. And so, as people who see God's creation, we can say, praise the Lord, O my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. We see how it talks of the, the power and the majesty, the Lord covering the earth with water. Um, I think he's talking about oceans there in verse 6, but uh, this morning as I walked to church, um, uh, this is the second set of clothes I've worn today because the first set got wet on the way to church because the Lord was covering the earth um, with water. Um, and I got very drenched. Um, but uh, that's why I keep a spare set at church, just in case. Um, and uh, a reminder, isn't there? Anytime we step outside of our doors um, and we look either at the mountains or at the torrential rain blocking the mountains, a reminder that, that our, our being, uh, in compared with God's being, is it, we're pretty small. We're pretty small, and God is great. And so the psalmist reminds us to worship. Verse 24, How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. This is not some big accident. This is the wisdom of God made manifest in creation. And so we're to praise the Lord who has the wisdom to make all of it. It's wonderful as you see science develop and understandings of biology and chemistry kind of coming to, uh, to be. The, the wisdom that God gave to humanity, we, we discover uh, God's world. Um, it's, uh, it's fascinating to see how we can learn about God's world. And as so many uh, scientists through the ages have been Christians, and their faith and their praise of God has led them to want to understand how is this all put together. And it's absolutely wonderful um, to realize the intricacy of, of life. We know ourselves the, the fragility of human life the intricacy with which uh, the body is created and all the parts work together. 
And so we praise the Lord for the wisdom, the wisdom. And that wisdom he gave to us. Verse 26, it, it goes away from the creation narrative and talks about ships. Because it's always good to talk about ships in the middle of a psalm, isn't it? Um, talking about ships going to and fro. Um, and uh, we're mindful at the moment of ships that are going to and fro and sitting outside ports um, for ages because they can't get in because we've bought too much stuff. Um, stimulus checks that many nations have received have caused us all as we sat at home to go online and order stuff that's being shipped from the other side of the world and is currently sitting uh, backlogged outside ports. And so there's a sense in which God gives us uh, wisdom, the wisdom to create amazing supply chains that tie up the whole world. But also sometimes we can get it quite wrong. And I think that's what's happened now as ships are stuck um, because we can't get the things we don't need and can't afford, but we ordered anyway. And they're sat outside ports. And now people are beginning to worry about what will happen at Christmas. We're reminded in the psalm to praise the Lord at all times and to have that same wisdom that God has as we look at creation, as we think about um, climate change. Some people say climate change isn't real. Some people are convinced it is. I don't know what you think about it. What I know is that this summer uh, there were towns that burnt down and at the same time, uh, 5,000 miles away in Europe, there were towns that were completely flooded. Neither of those events would be typical. So I think we do need, uh, whether you want to call it climate change or global warming or just uh, an observation of what humankind is doing to the world, we need to step up and take responsibility. Because our praising the Lord as we come to worship is the most important thing we can do. But also, Genesis tells us, we need to care for the world that God has created. Because if we don't, it won't be here for us to see the wonder and majesty of God because we'll have destroyed it. Our worship has to lead us to action. And that's why worship comes first. Seeking first the kingdom of God is the first thing we must do. And as we seek God's kingdom, and as we worship God, and as we marvel and wonder and sit in awe as we look at God's creation, so that moves us to do. It's the fifth word in our worship, uh, serve, life group, give, and go. It moves us to go and do, to go and live out our faith, to make a difference in the world, to be salt and light. We talk about living and sharing the good news of Jesus. It's no good if our hallelujah is only said on a Sunday morning in church for an hour, on a Sunday morning watching church at home on a sofa. If that is the end of our hallelujah, we're not going to see a world that is transformed to bring the kingdom of God to earth. We'll have some great church services. That'd be nice. But if we want to see a world that is transformed. It begins with hallelujah, praise the Lord, bless the Lord. And it continues as we leave the building, as we go into our workplaces, to our front lines, to our schools, to our neighborhoods, to our condos, to our communities, and we take in action the good news of Jesus Christ and the love of God into the world. So let's commit afresh today to be a people who don't leave it here, who take the hallelujah, who take the worship of the one who set the sun, stars, and moon in place out into our Monday to Saturday. Let's take our worship out so that we can praise the Lord and make a difference in the world, in our families, in our friendship groups, and in all creation. Amen.